the Supreme Court Tuesday overwhelmingly rejected a controversial conservative theory that would have drastically changed federal elections in this country. In a 6-3 ruling, the high court struck down the so-called independent state legislature theory. The case stemmed from challenges to North Carolina's congressional map, which the state's Supreme Court rejected as illegal gerrymandering. It was then brought to the Supreme Court by Republican lawmakers who used the theory to argue state legislatures held unfettered power to set federal election laws without any oversight from the courts. Jimmy Hoover joins me now. He's a Supreme Court reporter at the National Law Journal. Jimmy, let's go back. Um, we use the word unfettered when talking about the independent state legislature, which is one of those 10 cent words I worry about. Explain to us exactly what that is. Yeah, that was the argument uh, advanced by the Republican lawmakers in this case that state courts really don't have any authority to review election laws affecting federal elections passed by state lawmakers like themselves and that they have the exclusive authority to set those laws. And so what this would have done would have been to essentially slam the courthouse doors shut for a number of you know, voting rights activists or other voters who would have challenged uh, the North Carolina map as a partisan gerrymander, as you said. This is a theory, as you said, it's called the independent state legislature theory, and it's one that election law experts said would have had massive repercussions around the country because it would have essentially meant that state houses could have passed a number of voting laws, whether they're congressional maps or uh, uh, methods in which ballots are collected, without the ability of state courts to assess whether those laws comply with state law, either under statutes or the Constitution. Justice Thomas wrote the dissent and was joined in part by Justices Gorsuch um, and Alito. What did they argue? Where, where did they see in the Constitution some protection for this idea that the legislatures have total power? Well, it's based, the argument is based on the, the text of the elections clause of the Constitution, which says that the legislature has the authority to set the time, place, and manner of elections. And Thomas, reading that language quite literally, says that the authority is delegated to these legislatures and that, you know, it therefore doesn't incorporate this whole idea of state judicial review. Um, and so Thomas, along with Gorsuch, uh, accepted the premise that was advanced by the Republican lawmakers in this case. Now, uh, Chief Justice John Roberts, in his majority ruling, said that judicial review is a concept that dates back to the beginning of the country's founding, and he in invoked the Supreme Court's uh, kind of landmark 1803 ruling in Marbury versus Madison, which established judicial review over uh, the federal constitution. So he says it goes way back. Yeah, it's what they do, those, those Supreme Court justices. And uh, what exactly then is left uh, indeterminate uh, by the majority opinion? And could, could there be more uh, activity in this, in this area? Yeah, so Roberts's opinion left kind of a small crack in the door for uh, potential future challenges to state Supreme Courts uh, exercising review over state laws. He said that OK, while state courts aren't necessarily stripped of their authority to review these laws like voter ID laws or congressional maps, we don't want to say that they have, quote, free reign. That's the expression he used. And the idea was that state courts can't make it up. They can't just rewrite uh, state election laws out of whole cloth. And he didn't exactly define you know, what that looks like. So that is potentially going to set up some future challenges down the road of just what, where exactly does the authority of these state courts to review these laws actually stop? And what, looking at this ruling and other rulings from the Supreme Court on um, surrounding gerrymandering, what, what's your, is there an emerging view about the majority opinion on the court with respect to election law? Well, I mean, it's the second uh, major election law decision this month in which uh, the Supreme Court has pretty handedly rejected the arguments advanced by the Republican litigants. Um, in the last decision, it was involving Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act, and the court uh, pretty, pretty clearly rejected any kind of change to the law with respect to the Voting Rights Act. And so I think what you're seeing is a Supreme Court uh, majority uh, defined by uh, institutionalist judges like uh, Chief Justice Roberts and Justice Kavanaugh 
who are pretty wary of going too far too fast in the area of election law. Uh, this is a court that stayed completely out of the litigation over the 2020 election, and they don't want to be seen as making major changes, violent changes to the Voting Rights Act or accepting a theory that many election law experts have described as fairly radical with fairly huge repercussions. Jimmy Hoover, Supreme Court reporter for the National Law Journal. Thank you. Thank you.